So here we have the Lion Marconi style communication electrodes on here. And we're going to look at the ends here and see if we see any Evo marks. And if so, these will be the first Evo marks ever recorded from an ancient artifact point of view. These are maybe 120 years old, these cotton insulated electrodes. So there we go. I'll put that in here. Uh -huh. So, it's on, it's on the tray probably. Okay, put that in the FCM. Oh, <laughs> wonder what I'm looking at, but I'm <laughs> actually it would seem that I'm looking at the uh, impact craters on the copper. <laughs> so uh, this is already very interesting. Uh, so, all right. Well, let me do a map of this whole structure then, and then we all know. As we go down towards the tip, it gets blacker and blacker, which implies to me less and less copper. Right, very interesting. Okay, so um, maybe I want a mix of the two here. This is the tip. Wow, look at that. Huh. Interested to see what's on that. Okay, so let's do a map of these things. Uh, new. And I want to have this It's a lot of time. Well, let's see. So this looks like it where it's held um, in the device. It really looks like drawn copper wire. Yes, here are some fibers, cotton fibers. So they do look quite similar to what we were looking at in other scenarios. Some of these car copper fi carbon fibers. Uh, 
cotton fibers. Yeah, a lot less strike marks down here. Distinct area here, so we will sure have a good look at this. What a oh what are the elements here? Are we going to see calcium? What is the concentration of and formation of these strike marks? Do they? have high abundance of carbon? If so, why? Do we have any iron-rich crenellated spheres? Who knows? Who knows? It's early days with this sample. Definitely look like strike marks here. Could it just be impurities in the copper? And we just have to look at the formations and then make an assessment. These look a little bit like the kind of EVO strike marks on the electrode of the Lion reactor. Yes, this looks like a cotton fibre. That might be what it is. So, this light area here, don't know. We know this is aluminium in the background. So, is this copper? Copper oxide, rather. What does that make that? Rather nice little job that's done. Gives us a map to move around. Like I say, I think it's held in a contact here and held in a contact there. Let's see where the copper has been. This might actually be a good place to do a sample for what the base copper material is here, like where it's been squidged. In theory. So that's saving that out at the moment. Okay, so first off we want to take a baseline reading on what the copper is. So I expect that it is here. And if we do an uh, uh, and we will take uh, 15 kilovolts we're on point. So let's find out what this is new. And we will go, and we will go, uh. of course I'm assuming it's copper. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's copper. <laughs> and it's about as coppery as copper gets, copper. <laughs> Really? Mm, don't think so. Really? Maybe. <laughs> I don't think so, but yeah. No, there's no lanthanum there. It's just copper.
I don't think that's lanthanum, is it? There's no lanthanum line there. You're making it up. <laughs> well, a bit of copper carbonate, basically. All right, uh, we'll take one more sample just to make sure. No, <laughs> I think it's lanthanum, and don't be silly. What is this? This is just in this area. And we've got a carbon thing around the outside with a lump of carbon in the middle, maybe. Potentially, this is going to be where one might expect some interest to be occurring. In theory, this is where a lot of sparks hit. Okay, and we will take a picture of that, and we will go here, and we've got another one here, and we will see what elements we are supposed to have. What, what are we on? That's okay. Uh, we will see what elements we've got here. Have we got calcium? Well, we've got phosphorus. Ooh, ooh, there's the calcium. <laughs> oh dear. There's nickel. There is silicon. There is calcium. There is phosphorus. <clears throat> Magnesium. Look at that. This is a spark gap. Um, communication device from the turn of the 1900 mm. and it would appear to have the elements you would expect to be synthesized there it is so uh, let's take another couple of samples for the sake of argument Used in anger <laughs> for communication purposes. The first historical analysis of Neil Crichton Gold's electrodes from his spark gap, kind of like a Marconi type spark gap communication device and here are all the elements you would expect to be synthesized and in the previous one we also had nickel there from essentially pure copper with the usual bit of carbonate on there so let's see what these little splats are they probably are well, I mean, normally I'd expect them to be silicon or carbon rich, but let's see. <laughs> I 
very, very, very clear peaks. Got clear nickel peak there. This is the clear phosphorus peak. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's definitely got phosphorus. <laughs> it definitely has sulfur. <laughs> All right. Now, what is this? This is the magnesium peak. And what is that? That is the calcium peak. Anyway. Look at that. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, copper, nickel, chlorine, potassium, sulfur, phosphorus, calcium. Okay, um, that is very clear. Let's see what this one splat is. Let's see. Um, <laughs> Plenty of carbon, mostly carbon by atomic and oxygen, very little copper, almost zero copper, bit of phosphorus and sulfur. Okay, very, very interesting already. This is just wonderful. So I think what I'll do is I'll take a little... What should we do? Let's see what the other side has. Uh, we will go back here and we'll do a position. And we'll come out. That looks like a, almost like a silicon eruption. We've seen these kind of things before. Um, Let's see what that is. Oh, no, it's uh, moving. So could it be carbon? It kind of got excited, which means it probably get charged. Um, let's see quick what that is. Um, boom. Then we go like that, we go like that. There's that silicon. There's a little bit of silicon on that spot in that blob. A little and that, yeah, so this definitely silicon seems to be synthesized here. And what have we got here? Yeah, this is all the usual suspects. I don't think there's really lanthanum there. Stop it with the lanthanum. <laughs> I think it's got sulfur. It's definitely a peak of sulfur. And the peak of aluminium. Aluminium, aluminium, aluminium. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh dear. Right. So, um, and that's that. Uh, this is the kind of contact end. Mm -hmm. Really heavily hit area here with the sparks. Um, let's see uh, what we have in this area here. So um, I'll take a quick shot of that.
We'll do a map in this area, see what it thinks. Oxygen, carbon, okay, kind of on the dark areas as one would expect, nitrogen, copper, phosphorus, phosphorus, so one wonders whether the copper had phosphorus in it, but I don't recall it being up here, no, and no, so the raw material didn't appear to have phosphorus in it. Silicon, ah, blobs of silicon. Very discrete blobs of silicon. Calcium, hmm. Okay. Not really co-located with the silicon. Sulfur, where's that? Sulfur kind of everywhere that's not the other two. Although the sulfur does appear to be up where the um, uh, calcium is. Okay. Silicon, calcium, sulfur. Yeah, the sulfur and the calcium appear to be co-located. Oh no, actually the calcium's in the centre of this area up here. The sulphur's kind of on the outside. But otherwise it's mostly co-located. It's anti-located with the silicon except here. Uh, phosphorus. A lot of phosphorus. Okay. Um, that is that. Uh, Right, we'll look at the other electrode and see if that's a similar story there. So this area here looks like it's the area that got hit by sparks. So we will go there and uh, we will do a autofocus to see if it actually does a decent autofocus. <laughs> Maybe not. Hmm, might be okay for our purposes right now. So we'll go on the, this view. And we will go here. And we'll go in and have a look at this matrix of stuff here. Okay. Well, isn't that beautiful? These look very similar to the structures I saw on um, uh, the indium exposed to HHO with um, Roshna Mars's brown gas. So I think what I will do is we will go and do a new area here. And I think we will do a map of, uh, let's go like that. Okay, I need to stop this.
If I could stop it. <laughs> Can't stop it. <laughs> Europium? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think so. That's because I haven't got the boom energy up sufficiently. So I need to um, stop that. If I could. Which I can't. <laughs> well, while we're here, this is carbon. Uh, Oxygen everywhere. Uh, sulfur. Phosphorus, phosphorus, nickel, nickel, silicon, hmm, interspersed with the phosphorus around this blob. Okay, I'm going to go and up the beam energy for map. Which is probably now going to complain. Yeah, it's not so bad. Uh, and we will do another map of, let's say, this area here. consistent on the kind of elements being found. Chlorine in the absence of sodium. Phosphorus, very clear signal of phosphorus in this block here. Come uh, on, interspersed. Is that really nickel? Not sure it's nickel in this case. Not convinced. Where does it think the nickel is? There's a ring there. Convinced on the nickel there. Take a quick sample on there. 
Mm, it's gonna let me. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh. Very, very clear signals of the sulfur and the phosphorus, chlorine, silicon, obviously carbon. <laughs> okay. Right, um, I think maybe we need to try and do something that is along the structure here, and it's going to be difficult, isn't it? Um, This looks like where maybe the other end of the wire was used as a spark gap and honestly it looks like it's melted to copper. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me, so we'll find out. Is it very pure copper or relatively pure copper? I don't know. Um, 
also blame my the copper. Wow. Don't always assume what you're going to see. Would appear to have iron there. And this blob is uh, calcium rich. Nickel. Chlorine, whatever, that's probably aluminium, something like that. Oh, what's that? Right. Anyway. <coughs> Lots of elements. What's that there? I'll do one more spot on that if it's going to capture it. Don't know where it's going to capture it. A little copper crystal. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Don't think it's rhodium. Nah. Not rhodium. I mean, it is a lot brighter than the other bit, but I don't think it's rhodium. I don't think it's rhodium. Exclude. Right. Um. Okay. Um, we'll go back to here, and we'll go back to here, and we will look or some of these uh, interesting features, maybe, which look like off the central impact zone uh, strike marks. Let's find a, an example, Just a more isolated strike mark. Um, Because I don't know which one was used mostly for the cathode and which one was used mostly for the anode. Judging by the level of dirt on this one, <clears throat> I think maybe this was the anode and this was the cathode, but let's see. Uh, sorry. <laughs> this was the cathode and this was the anode. So, let's pick a potential strike mark. Oh God, this is just all the elements down here where this is so we want to go a little bit away from the main action and see what we see I don't know let's have a look at that
Um, strike mark ish. This is the best example, I don't know. Nice little sort of cluster structure here. So let's have a look at what we have here. Is that the best we can do, focus-wise? Now, if I was to guess, I would suggest that this is the death of the Evo and it maybe left this track as it burned down and that if I was to guess, maybe this is calcium rich. These little bubbly things. I don't know, but maybe we're going to find out. Let's take a nice shot of that. Ooh, that's rather lovely, isn't it? Lots of these bubbly things going on around here, isn't there? Okay, so um, let's have a look at what we see. Ah, uh, go here. And we will go uh, here. And uh, where is this one actually, by the way? Uh, it's, it's on electrode one, I think. Um, and let's go. That's very, very well defined, isn't it? Look at that. The, the core and the surround. Very, very well defined. What a beautiful sample this is. This pear over here, it's just lovely. Wow. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do a line on this because um, why not? Let's see what we see. Now, yeah. not a lot of samples. What's going on there? And we've got the right. Uh, that's okay. Should be okay. <laughs> it's not the highest sampling. All right. Okay. Let's uh, get rid of that. Remove measurements. Uh, okay. Uh, let's take a couple of these in. Well, I take it all back. It isn't calcium. It's a whole bunch of sulfur. It's a little sulfur, sulfur ball, snowball. So is this all sulfur coming down here? Look at that. Sulfur, 12%. <laughs> Oh, this is the best sample ever. <laughs> uh, who would have thought it? Right, let's have a look at this. Yep, these little balls are solver balls. This is the snowballs on cobblestones revisited. This is O2 going to sulfur. That's a cluster of clusters. It's rather lovely, isn't it? It would appear that each of the clusters has two clusters in it which is cute. I wonder if these little splats have sulfur in the center as well. Only one way to find out. Let's put a sample point there. Oh yeah, we're seeing a pattern. We're seeing a pattern. How cool is this? How cool is this? Right. So I like the yin-yang structure here and we've got a Yin yang structure here, all over. Lovely, 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 lovely. How awesome is this sample? Thank you, Neil Crichton Gold. Look at that sulfur peak. Wow.
Okay, so I think what we need to do is let's do a map of this area. Let's do a map because why not? Um, and we'll include all of that. Um, oh, we worry it's going to make it. Uh, yeah, I'll be alright. Copper, obviously. Oxygen. Interesting. Wow. <laughs> Look at the sulfur. <laughs> yep, I think it's the sulfur. <laughs> this is the same sort of story as we saw. Oh, that's amazing. On the snowballs on cobblestones. Phosphorus. Wow. Um, okay. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Phosphorus on this side. Sulfur on this side. These ones are phosphorus. No, these are sulfur as well. That is impressive. Wow. I like this sample a lot. I think I want to spend more time with this sample. Look at that, sulfur, phosphorus. And it really is definitely a sulfur line, very, very strong there. And the P line is very strong, silicon creeping in there. Wow, look at that. Look at it. Little sulfur balls, just like we saw on the yeah, Mars, I guess. So, in fact, it's sulfur all the way in this thing, but just concentrated in the middle. In these ball, this is a ball of balls, but these are just little individual balls. So, we're going to have a look around in this kind of area. But this is quite exciting. This is quite exciting. This is 120 years old, this sample. Amazing. Huh. Who would have thunk it? Right, go back to here. And I think we're going to see more of this story. It's just all over here, where these balls are rolling around. Okay. Now I think we'll do the same sort of treatment here. So that's that zone up there. I kind of like the look of this one here because it's kind of, it's got a ball in the center. Look at that, let's have a look at that. Maybe if I switch this to SED. Gonna get a little bit more detail out of it, maybe not. I'm gonna have to switch this down. I wish I had a week with this. Ah. 
that's made it really better. <laughs> okay. Not overly convinced. <laughs> Really? Not seeing it myself. I'm going to switch to BSD4. Okay. Oh, you definitely don't see the circle there when it's BSD4. So I'm going to do that so that we actually have some geometry. Um, oh, come on. Just to go a bit quicker. It's better already. <laughs> Let's see what we have here. Um, I don't want to do that. I want to move and I'll go here. And I'll look at these things here. Um, right, firstly, I want to go here. I've got a new one there. And I want to go a couple of spots. One. Yep, sulfur. But what is this area just over here? Sulfur rich, let's point it that way. It's copper. <laughs> I mean, it really is copper. <laughs> so what is the centre of this little puppy here? Yeah. Okay. And I want to go like that. And I want to go across there like that. So the oxygen is in the centre. Okay.
the carbon is around the outside here. Sulfur's on this edge here. Chlorine is in the middle. It really is in the middle. So, oxygen in the middle. Uh, copper around the outside, but in this area here we have the carbon and the carbon. And just in this point here, we have the sulfur. And through the middle there, we have the chlorine. So the chlorine is located with the oxygen. In this particular structure, is it finished? Nope, still doing it. So what it's doing is taking multiple samples and refining the um, line scan. Well, look at that. That's very, very precise, isn't it? Still doing the averaging on here but you can see that as we move along this line we have copper on the outside yep don't want to that's a, just a complete mistake and we want to get rid of that remove measurements yes okay so as we go back to this one you can see in the centre we have the oxygen, this is what we observe. And off to the side here on this side and a little bit on that side, uh, we have the sulphur on the outside. And then, and of course sulphur is double oxygen. And then uh, nitrogen is basically not there, I don't know why it's there, let's remove nitrogen. You can recalculate it then, ignore. Um, hopefully, no, it's not okay. <laughs> now it's already there. Okay, yes, it is. So, um, yeah, this is very, very cool indeed. So, sulfur either side, oxygen in the middle, uh, copper on the far outside, and then carbon is kind of like only in the overall zone of the impact. Very, very cool very clear exotic vacuum object impact mark here. I think this is going to be one of the most interesting samples I've ever had a chance to study. Thank you again to the, posthumously to Neil Crichton Gold uh, for acquiring this sample and then allowing the MFMP to take it over. And thank you to his wife as well. What a fantastic sample this is. Okay, so I think probably that's enough for this. It's just, yeah, I could spend all day on this, but I want to get another sample in quickly uh, before the end of the day. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful strike mark. Um, little sulfur balls around the outside. It's just great. Look at that. Wow. Um,
Okay, we're going to try and get one other sample in quickly. Uh, hmm. Which sample? That's pretty impressive. Ball embedded in there. Um, Well, you can basically see the same pattern repeating everywhere. Uh, this will be another impact mark. It would just be nice to spend a lot of time with this sample um, because I think it would be very valuable. Wow, so satisfying, so satisfying. <laughs> Look at that. Zero carbon on the outside, it's basically pure copper. The carbon comes up. Already we're seeing the oxygen centered. And in that central area, we see the start of the synthesis of the aluminium the silicon, and even a creeping in there potentially of some calcium. That is an Evo strike mark. I, <laughs> I tell you, this has far, far, far exceeded any possible expectation I had of it. This is potentially a 120 year old sample from a spark gap based communication device. And it has all of the goods of exotic vacuum objects on it. Right there. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> Look, it's a complete bucket of no copper, or very, very little copper. And the silicon is synthesized in the middle, the aluminium is synthesized in the middle, the calcium, such that it is. It's very low on the calcium, but it's still in the middle. The oxygen obviously in the middle, and the carbon in the middle. Amazing. Just amazing. I reckon we could get hundreds and hundreds of examples to study on this sample. Breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking. Hmm. Wow. How about that? Car calcium is a little bit low and it keeps not really registering it, but it's there. It's definitely there. And the 
this peak here is the sulfur peak. just a bit weak. <laughs> uh, well, that is that. Look at that. Just the kind of trace carbon also on the outside and there. Boom! On the outside there, you have up to 77% drops down in the middle and oxygen takes over oxygen there. A little bit of nitrogen creeping in around there. Then you have aluminium just in the centre section. Silicon just in the centre section. Uh, calcium is basically not there in this particular one. So we'll get rid of that. Uh, okay. Wow. Wow. Thank you to Neil Crichton Gold Save.